video I'm going to show you how to make these um, central squares that I've made in these in this fabric um, and when I designed these squares what I really wanted was a completely solid square that was a really nice um, sharp square shape so often when you make these square granny squares sometimes they're not really proper squares they're sort of slightly rounded on the corners and additionally um, you get these um, chain to corner spaces um, which also detracts from um, a true square shape so and this is just a two round motif and then I've just bordered it with um, a traditional solid granny square um, so that's what I'm going to show you in this video, how to make this two round um, square, solid granny square. So for this particular um, project I've been using um, four ply or sock yarn, fingering weight yarn with a three millimeter hook. You can of course use any thickness of yarn with a corresponding hook size. We're going to start off with a slip knot loop on the hook and then we are going to chain four and then we're going to join in the first chain to form a ring and join with a slip stitch next I'm going to chain four now this counts as a treble crochet in US terminology. In um, British terminology, that's a double treble, the chain four counts as. And the next stitch is a US treble or UK double treble. So that's two yarn overs. You go into the stitch, pull up a loop. You should have four loops on the hook yarn over draw off two, yarn over draw off two, yarn over draw off two. That is a US treble or a UK double treble. Next I'm going to make two double crochets into the ring. If you're using British terminology that is two treble crochets. And now I'm going to make um, a corner. So we've started off with a partial corner. We've done one side, which is the two double crochets. So don't worry too much if this doesn't make sense to you right now, you will understand as we go along. So another treble crochet. So that's two yarn overs or double treble if you are using British terminology. one treble two trebles three trebles all into the ring so each corner is made up of three trebles or three UK double trebles we're going to do another side which is two double crochets. One. I'm not happy with that. And sometimes this live loop can go a bit baggy and then when you make the next stitch um, it looks very sloppy and it won't give you that nice solid look that you want. So it's just one thing to keep an eye on is to keep that live loop um, the same size as the hook. So two double crochets into the ring, one, two, next up another corner, so that's three trebles remember, UK three double trebles, one, two, three. So you should be able to see that it's starting to form a square, in fact we've made a kind of triangle, we're ready for another side, 
which as you can guess is two double crochets into the ring. One, two. Now you're ready for another corner. Three trebles into the ring. So now we're ready to make the last side and finish off this first corner because if you remember we only did a chain four and one treble and each corner is made up of three stitches. So finish off the side, we're going to put two double crochets in there, one. So you might find by this point you've got a lot of stitches in there, don't be afraid to shunt them along, you can be quite rough, you need to make sure you leave yourself enough space and make sure you're not crocheting over a load of stitches you've already made. Two. Now I'm ready for the last stitch which is a treble or a UK double treble into the ring being careful that I'm actually crocheting into the ring and not over previous stitches and now we're going to finish this round by slip stitching into the fourth chain of your beginning chain four so we've got one two three four treat that chain like a normal hook so you go front loop back loop and slip stitch so it's quite important to make sure you do treat that chain like a stitch and don't go round the whole chain because that will leave a big hole there so at the end of this round you should have 20 stitches which consists of three trebles in each corner and two doubles on each side. Round two. Round two. So this is where this square um, sort of diverges a bit from traditional ways of making a square. We, there's a couple of slight tweaks that we're going to make with this, which helps to give it that nice sharp square shape. So as long as you follow the instructions, you'll be fine. It might seem a bit weird or slightly different to what you normally do, but um, if you just bear with and um, give it a go and you'll see that it does, it does give a better result for this particular um, motif. So first of all, we are going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. So try to make sure that these chains are quite nice and neat and that they are um, true to hook size, i.e. you're not chaining with a, an overly extended um, loop on the hook, and also that you're not chaining really, really tightly. It needs to um, match the gauge of your stitches, which often isn't as noticeable when you're doing short chains, like a chain two or chain three, but as you then go into the realms of longer chains, you really start to notice the difference in gauge between your chains and your normal stitches. So this chain five is going to represent a double treble. That's why we got five. So um, in the UK, I don't know what that would be called, a treble treble. Um, I'll have to double check that and I'll pop some text up in the video when I've uh, discovered what it is. <laughs> so you've got a chain five which represents a US double treble. Now you're going to turn your work to the back and but before we do that if you just have a quick look at what you've got here you've got a chain five and then this stitch right at the base of your chain five that is actually the slip stitch join and we're going to be working into that so Make sure you've got your eye on that. And then if you have another look at what you've just done, you've got the chain four from the previous round that you slip stitched into. You've got the top of that, which is the, the fourth chain of your chain four from the previous round. You're also going to be working into that on the way on the way back. So for this beginning and end of the round, you need to remember that we've got a slip stitch there which we're going to work into, but then we're also going to be working into this uh, chain four, into the actual place where you did this other slip stitch. Anyway, don't worry too much about that. 
it will become clearer when we get to it. So you've done your chain five, that counts as a treble, turn the work. Next up you're going to do um, yarn over twice and you're going to make a treble into that slip stitch join, into the actual slip stitch. So that's a UK double treble you've put into that slip stitch. Into the next stitch, remember you're working into the back of the work now so it might look slightly different. Remember to tilt it forward if you need to find the front loop and the back loop of your stitches because you need to work through both of them. In the next stitch we are going to put two double crochets or for UK that's two trebles, two in there. Next we're just going to put one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So that's one double UK treble, another double. Into the next stitch we are going to put two double crochets or two UK trebles, one, two. In the next stitch we're going to make a corner. So this corner should fall into the middle of the three stitches you made from the previous round for the corner, which were your three trebles. So, or your three double trebles, if you're using British terminology. So here you've got the three stitches. We've already put two doubles in the first. Into this second, we're going to make a corner. You don't need to continually check this. This is just um, helpful when you're troubleshooting because the, these squares, once you get the hang of them, they're really easy. But to start with, they're a little bit tricky because you don't have that distinctive chain to corner that is a very good um, reference to keep you on track. Um, so, the corner is a treble, which is a UK double treble. A double treble, which is a UK, um, I think, treble treble. Um, so that's three yarn overs. And the tip, trick here is to keep them nice and neat. So don't let it go too wayward, otherwise you'll get a really sloppy stitch. Next up in the same stitch is a treble. So let's have a look at that corner. We've got a treble, a double treble, a treble. So you can probably guess what's coming next. Two double crochets in the next stitch. One double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Two double crochets in the next stitch. And then our corner, which is treble. double treble. So here's a little tip for keeping these neat. Once you've done your yarn overs, push them all together to keep them nice and neat. If you like you can put your index finger on there just to help control everything while you go into the stitch. Pull up a loop. Um, and then as you're making each step you can actually grab the stitch that you've just made. So moving your fingers up along the stitch to help keep everything nice and neat. Next is a treble and then another side, so two double crochets. One in each of the next two. Two into the next. And another corner, which is a treble. A double treble. Again, keep this neat. You can also add a bit of extra tension on your your feeding finger. So here I'm just giving a little bit of an extra pull to stop it all going too loose. Moving my finger up the stitches. You don't have to do this, but I know some people do struggle to really keep that um, double treble nice and neat. <clears throat> so I've just put another treble in there and then another side, two doubles in one, one in each of the next two. And as we're coming up to 
to the end of the round you probably start noticing um, that it looks a bit weird because you've we've turned the work round remember and we're working um, so it does look like we've got two stitches left and that's fine because in the next stitch we're going to finish off this side with two double crochets so that's the last proper stitch now to finish off this original corner and to help sort of close up this gap that we've had from slip stitching and turning the work round we're going to actually put the last stitch of the, this corner into the chain of um, the previous round and that's easy enough to find because you can see the slip stitch coming out of it so it's really important not to go all the way in like that because it'll make a big hole you do need to go into the actual chain in exactly the sp same way as you went in with the slip stitch okay now to keep this square looking really nice and crisp um, I am not going to finish with a slip stitch join I'm going to finish with a sewn bind off um, so I'm going to cut the yarn leave enough for to, to sew but not too much that you're wasting your precious yarn and then you can do a sewn bind off when I'm making these um, I don't always have a needle to hand so I will show you how I do a sewn bind off with a crochet hook or an invisible bind off so I've cut my yarn I pull the live loop out completely like that and remember when you're doing an invisible bind off or sewn bind off you're actually creating a mock stitch which means you need to skip a stitch otherwise you end up with one stitch too many so in this case that's quite good because our first stitch is a chain five anyway so we're just going to completely ignore the chain five and we're going to find this first treble that we made and we're going to go from the back of the work into this first treble through the front loop through the back loop we're going to grab this tail end and we're going to pull that all the way through so what we've done there which you can't see yet is that we've made a front loop a mock front loop for a for a um a stitch there doesn't look much at the moment because we haven't finished it next up this last stitch you made which is here you need to have a little look at it and you can see the back loop there front loops on the other side or from this side that's the front loop and that's the back loop underneath it you can see what I call a pearl ridge which looks like a knitted pearl stitch what you need to do is come this is where having a good crochet hook is really important cheap crochet hooks that aren't properly tooled the tips are not nice and pointy like these clover ones they can be um, have a ridge on them they can be quite square they can be quite flat um, some of the bamboo ones are also um, quite rounded which is fine for some projects but um, I do prefer a nice sharp tip because it allows you to do things like this so you go up through the bottom of that pearl bump and up through that front loop so that you're literally coming right up the middle of that stitch then you grab the tail end of the yarn and you pull that through so if you have a quick look here this chain is quite long so it's um, you might need to pull the chain down a tad so what you can see is here I've created a mock stitch so this doesn't create a bump like a slip stitch join does I'm just going to get rid of this tail a minute um, and it also is not creating an extra stitch because sometimes when you um, end with a slip stitch join um, it does create a very small stitch that can spoil the look of your work so here I've made this mock stitch mock, mock stitch so this is obviously very uh, not secure at all at the moment because I've just made a loop um, what I do now at this point because I'm usually making a lot of these and I don't want to stop and sew everything in as I go along I just do a bit of a holding stitch 
So I do that by getting my hook and coming from the right to left from this chain, the beginning chain five, I'm just going to take one, one of the ridges of the chain, doesn't matter which one, any one, the one that's sort of sticking out the most, and then you take, go through one of the ridges of that last stitch you made. So they're, uh, you know, parallel to each other. And then you just pull that through. And then you do that again. You go under the next loop of the chain of your chain five and through from right to left through the next ridge of the back of that last stitch you made. And then you pull that through. So you don't pull it too tight. That is just to temporarily secure that mock stitch that you've made. So later on when you come to sewing your ends properly you'll then just get a needle and just sew that into the base of this row um, at the same time as when you're sewing that in. So you've sort of partially sewn in that end. So this is what it should look like at the end of round two when you have also sewn in, uh, made that sort of mock stitch at the end. Um, obviously this isn't, um, you can see the the edges tilting up a little bit. Um, don't worry about that. When you put an extra round on, that really adjusts that. 